Hello. In this presentation, we're going to talk about volumetric tire models for longitudinal vehicle dynamic simulation. My name is Joy D. Banerjee. I'm an application engineer at MapleSoft. This project is a result of efforts from myself and Professor John McPhee at the Department of Systems Design Engineering, University of Waterloo, Canada. In this project, the objective is to develop volumetric models of automotive tires for applications in model-based development. We want to experimentally determine and measure tire forces and moments using a vehicle measurement system, and we want to perform model validation and parameter estimation using the measured data for the developed models. The objective of the tire model is to evaluate the traction force Fx, the lateral force Fy, the normal force Fz, and the overturning moment Mx, rolling resistance My, and self-aligning moment Mz from the orientation and speed of the vehicle. Existing tire models can be separated in three broad categories. On the one side of the spectrum are the tire models that are based on experimental data only. Pacheca's magic tire formula would be the example of one of these. On the other hand, we have tire models that capture the complex physical behavior of the constituent material. Finite element-based tire models would be an example of this kind. In between these two extremes lies the tire models that capture some physical nature uh, of the tires. And uh, depending on various complexities, these tire models can have various features built into them. For example, a brush model has been used with, in conjunction with rigid carcass model, linear carcass model, non-linear carcass model, and even asymmetrical carcass models to model tires. Similarly, string models and beam models have also been used by many researchers to model the behavior of automotive tire. However, if these tire models are projected onto the accuracy and complexities plane, we will see that there is a lack of balance between the accuracy and complexity. This is precisely the spot that we want to fill by using a volumetric tire model. At this point, it is necessary to explain the formulation behind the volumetric tire model. In volumetric approach, it is theorized that when two bodies are in contact with each other, springs extend from their undeformed surfaces, which try to pull them apart, generating contact forces and moments. If we consider these springs to be linear, the total force ex exerted by all these springs can be expressed as a surface integral which evaluates to be a constant kV multiplied by the volume of interpenetration. The location of this net force can be evaluated by another surface integral shown here, and it comes out to be the centroid of the volume itself. kV is known as the volumetric stiffness coefficient. The introduction of damping can also be accommodated in this framework. If we consider A to be the volumetric damping factor, the total force Fn can be evaluated as kV times volume times 1 plus A multiplied by Vcn, where Vcn is the normal component of the velocity of the centroid of the volume. However, it can be easily seen that the point of application of this force Fn is no longer at the centroid of the volume. For this reason, it gives rise to what is known as a rolling resistance. 
If a body is undergoing relative rota angular rotation with respect to the other body, the rolling resistance can be expressed in terms of kV, A, Js, and omega t. Js is a weighted second moment tensor of the contact surface, where the weighting functions are the deflections at every point on it. In this slide, the contact patch of a tire is shown, which is rotating with various angular velocities from 0 to 20 radians per second. The direction of travel and the direction of rotation are indicated in this figure, and the colors indicate the magnitude of the normal force at every point. As we can see here, as the angular velocity of the tire increases, the location where the maximum amount of normal force act moves towards the front of the wheel. This in turn results in a backward moment that counters the rotation of the tire itself. This is precisely what gives rise to rolling resistance. To validate the model and to estimate the parameter values, we have used a drop test to perform initial parameter estimation and a vehicle measurement system implementation for rigorous parameter identification. In the drop test scenario, we have dropped a tire from different heights to, to simulate different impact speeds while monitoring the motion using a high-speed camera and image tracking softwares. For the VMS system, or the Vehicle Measurement System, we've used a Toyota RAV4 electric vehicle, which was instrumented with wheel force sensor, wheel position sensors, laser ground sensors, laser Doppler velocimeter, IMUs and GPS to track the orientation of the body, and EVCAN analyzer software to capture and analyze the data. It is important to note that the VMS system and its associated sensors measure forces and moments from a different point of application. That is, the model predicts forces and moments acting at the contact patch, whereas the VMS system measures the forces and moments acting at the wheel hub. For this reason, it is important to use these dynamic equations to convert the measured forces and the calculated forces to a common platform before any comparison can be done. The drop tests were performed to simulate different impact speeds from different heights. These plots show the variation of velocity with time and the position of the tire center as a function of time. To match this model behavior, we have used three different tire models. One is a linear point contact formulation, which is used extensively in many commercial products. Second is a volumetric tire model that has linear springs and dampers in it. The third is a bilinear point contact model where the stiffness and damping coefficients vary in a piecewise linear fashion. The characteristics of these three models are shown here in this figure. When simulated, it is observed that the point contact formulation that uses linear springs and damper gives rise to the maximum amount of error. The volumetric formulation that uses linear springs and damper performs slightly better. However, the nonlinear point contact formulation is found to be the one which generates least amount of error.
This indicates that the behavior of the tire has some nonlinearity associated with it. When simulated, it is observed that the linear point contact formulation gives rise to maximum deviation from the measured behavior. The linear volumetric formulation, however, offers slightly better performance, whereas the nonlinear point contact formulation gives rise to least amount of error. The data obtained from the VMS testing are used for parameter estimation for dynamic tire behavior. We have used different tests to measure forces and moments for different vehicle maneuvers. We have performed acceleration tests, braking tests, and coast down tests. The results of an acceleration test where the car was accelerated to 108 km per hour and then decelerated to zero is shown on the right. The vehicle speed and the wheel torques are shown in this slide. This slide shows the variation of Fz or the normal force with time. It also shows the variation of the effective radius of the tire with time. As we can see here, the normal force actually decreases during the acceleration phase and increase during the deceleration phase. This is because of the fact that the shown data here is obtained from the front wheel. Similarly, the R effective of the tire is found to increase during the acceleration phase and decrease during the deceleration phase. This slide also shows the variation of a longitudinal force with respect to the longitudinal slip ratio. The plotted points show the expected friction curve that can be used to identify parameters of the tire model. For parameter estimation, we have used Maple's optimization toolbox where we have used gradient-based optimization routines and differential evolution, which is their global optimization tool. We are also looking into custom optimization routines, such as homotopy methods. To identify the model parameters for the normal force model, the developed tire model was subjected to a normal force Fz, which was measured from the VMS. The simulated variation of the effective radius was compared to that obtained from the VMS system itself. By using optimization routines, the parameter values are identified to minimize the difference between these two values. The plot shown on this slide shows the difference between experimental data and simulation data of the effective radius variation over time. As we can see here, the trends and the values of these two quantities are almost identical, which indicates that we have a good fit the, for the parameters in question. This gives rise to the following values as a parameter estimated, by which we can identify the volumetric stiffness coefficient and the damping parameter for the tire. In our next presentation, we're going to present the derivation and identification of longitudinal and lateral force models. Thank you for your attention. In our next presentation, we're going to be talk presenting. In our next video, we'll be presenting In our next video, 
we will be presenting the derivation and parameter estimation of the lateral and longitudinal force models. We thank you for your attention. We'll thank you for your attention.